Can you see the light? Can you see the light? The light. From within you. I hear every day the stars born. Good afternoon, everyone. This is another edition of a Credit Life podcast. I have a very special guest. Go ahead and introduce yourself. LV Latrell, local spoken word artist. I appreciate having you on here. Thank you. I appreciate you having me. No problem, no problem. So we're out here in Lower Maryland, and uh, you know, this is another opportunity for you to get to know someone who is active in the community, but also use their gift and their talents to help inspire others. So to get started, where are you originally from? I was born in Georgia, Augusta, Georgia, raised in Washington State, but I've been in the DMV for 23 years now. Okay, okay. So how was that transition coming from Georgia down south coming up to the DMV? So the transition from Georgia uh, wasn't so bad. I was only there for about three years of my life before I moved to Washington State. So the transition from Washington State, though, mm. to the DMV was a total culture shock. You oh, know, wow. I went from being like the minority in my class to being blended in with everybody else. Okay. So <laughs> that was uh, kind of you know rough to navigate a little bit. You know, I came with a lot of my northwestern tendencies, okay. and then to be in the center of you know a highly cultured area like DC with the Go Go era and the Chocolate City and all of that, it was very foreign to me. Okay. So it took a little adjusting. I feel like I'm still adjusting 23 years later, but you know I feel like I've meshed a lot of my southern Georgia qualities with my northern, and then a DMV, and then mm -hmm. you got LV the Trail. Okay, okay. <laughs> so you can have your soul food and then to put it all together, put that mumbo sauce on your soul food and you know what you're doing. You know what I'm now, come on now. Exactly, exactly. <laughs> now, come on, exactly. you know. But, uh, so what, what, what would you say was the first, like, thing that you experienced where it made you realize, like, okay, this is some, this is a place that I could, you know, become, I could call it home. Like, was it, was it something that a friend you met or was like a certain event you went to and you say, you know what, like this, I like this place. I may want to like live here for the rest of my life, possibly. Um, so I think mostly it was the culture for here that really made me enjoy being in this area. Um, I moved here when I was 13. So, you know, I didn't have a choice to move here, but since I've been here, I've gotten really comfortable with, like I said, the culture and the people. And they have so much diversity of musical taste, of artists in the area, the different types of scenes going on from local rappers to local uh, poets to artists. It's just a lot to see and take in. You know, you kind of see that around the, the city when you, when you drive into the city, you see, you know, art plastered up or you'll hear somebody on the side, you know, banging go go or something like that. It's that I think it spoke to the artist in me okay. and really made me love being here. So it seemed like it was like a nice infusion of, you know, where you were at and then where mm -hmm. you, you know, went to and then like just being here, like you said, just open up your mind to different things, different approaches yeah. to, you know, artistic approaches yeah. and things of that nature as well. So as far as your early upbringings, when did you first begin to write? Elementary school. Um, I wrote my first short story in second grade. Second grade. Second grade, I wrote my first short story. Um, I loved reading um, at that time. I still love reading. Um, and ever since then, you know, I went on to write more stories. When I moved here, wrote more in middle school, started winning you know, local awards at my school for you know, writing stories. And then I uh, got into poetry when I was in high school. And, and I just kind of elevated. And I just determined I, it looks like I'm a writer. <laughs> OK, OK. So what is the do you remember the first, uh, I guess, poem that you wrote? Like in and do you remember what made you write that? The first poem I wrote, honestly, was an erotica poem. At, at, at what age again? This was high school. It, <laughs> this was high school. A, hey, hey. <laughs> I mean, I didn't know a whole lot about that realm, but um, I knew enough to um, have an imagination. Okay. And uh, so it was this boy that I had a crush on in high school that really made me write that. And I wrote it out. I folded it up, I snuck it into his backpack. <laughs> and um and yeah, the rest is the rest is history. <laughs> wow. I, did did that person ever tell you what they thought about that? They did. They did. You know, uh, like I said, that was high school. That was 03. And mm -hmm. I spoke to this person maybe two years ago and he said, I still got that poem. Oh wow. After <laughs> all those years. After all those years. That lets uh, you know she's a great writer, you uh, know. Like it was it was 
some of my most notable work. I'll say that for sure. <laughs> so with that being said, you know, you spoke about it, it was like more so kind of you say erotic, correct? Yeah, it was erotic. So, you know, being somebody that can write with in, in, in different forms, what is your most favorite, I guess, expression of writing? My favorite, like, I love writing poetry about, and I know this can seem like low hanging fruit sometimes. I just love writing poetry about being black. Being you know, black. Being black, like the black experience, like the joys of it, the ups, the downs, like everything. You know, I don't, I don't believe in focusing on specifically like black trauma, even though in 2020, you know, when the whole George Floyd situation happened and really kind of erupted around the world as far as Black Lives Matter, uh, I did write a lot of black trauma just to kind of pinpoint and put a target immediately on what's happening in Black America. But since then, you know, I tried to write more happy Black and uh, bring awareness, uh, even as far as my latest piece called Accountability Post, where I target uh, making sure you're going to therapy and so that your past trauma doesn't bleed on other people and i feel like a lot of times black men get caught into that a lot dealing with relationships where they get into relationships with other black women who haven't faced their traumas and then those black women bleed on black men but um yeah my latest piece definitely focus on healing uh, like I said, I don't always try to focus on black trauma and everything because I feel like we have enough of that. Yeah, <laughs> and we do. We have a enough surplus. of that for movies, poems, songs, and all of that. So I really love to try to encourage black and be happy. That makes sense because, you know, in our community, you know, certain things that happen, it creates that domino effect. And then it becomes those generational curses. And then when you don't heal, it, you're gonna, it's gonna spill out on someone else. And the best way to correct that is to fix yourself first instead of trying to use somebody else as your crutch and then say, okay, because of you said this thing and because I can move forward is because all because of that. It's like, you know, you gotta be more transparent than that. So as far as, you know, just creating pieces that, you know, inspire you and uplift the black community, um, do you do anything as far as in the local community, as far as like activism work, or you just use pretty much your writing to do, you know, be a part of that? Right now, I just use my writing. I would love to get more involved, you know, later. You know, I do have two children. They, just, my left, uh, last one just graduated high school. So now I have a lot more open time to kind of do that. So I would love to start getting involved in uh, the community. But right now, I do just use my voice for that as yeah. far as poetry writing and spoken word. Well, I know for myself and, and speaking on behalf of those who are watching that they appreciate what you're doing, especially, you know, having kids and being able to still create and write, which I know is probably hard for a lot of parents out there just going to work and then trying to be, you know, uh, a great example for your kids at home and trying to have that emotional, you know, uh, awareness to make sure, OK, hey, you know, what's going on in their life and their world and stuff like that. So I'm pretty sure you bring that balance in. Um, have you written anything that involves like your kids specifically or something for the kids? Um, not specifically for the kids. I did write a piece on my kids. It's called Homegrown. I wrote this about uh, maybe three or four years ago, and it does talk about, you know, just being a young mom and having those kids and trying to be the best that you can be and not trying to pigeon yourself, pigeonhole yourself into being the perfect parent and having to do everything correctly and just you know, growing and learning at the same time because like i said i had my kids fairly young so i feel like a lot of my growth happened at the same time with them so we grew together okay mm -hmm. so that was that that's what that poem was about so let me ask you this you know speaking of having kids at a young age did you face any challenges as far as outside opinions and, and things of that nature and and how would you and what advice would you give to other you know women who have have who are having kids at a young age or just you know young people in general having kids I faced uh, not as much as you would think, um, you know, opinions. I feel like a lot of people looked at what I was doing mm -hmm. and because I did not stop my education once I had those kids, I continued to get my degree. I had finished high school, you know, I continued to get jobs. Like I wasn't ever complacent. Um, I didn't say, oh, because I have kids, so I can't do this, or I have kids, I can't do that. I didn't put those restrictions on me. So everyone who looked at me from the outside they couldn't they would never tell okay. they would never tell that i was a teen mom and that i had kids young and uh, so i didn't run into 
a lot of that but once people did realize you know then i would kind of start getting some funny looks and once okay. i would start telling them the ages and my age and then they would start doing the numbers and like, wait a minute you had your kids go oh. but then i think that made them even more impressed that i was still doing the things that i was doing despite that and that is one thing that i really want to tell young mothers that you, you do not have to quit i know it can be hard i had a village I had a village um, of people that really helped me at that time to help me get through high school and help me, you know, get jobs and help me finish college. So it was, I was blessed. Okay. I was blessed in that aspect for sure. But there are resources out there. So there are resources out there. And I just want to really impress upon young people who have kids, like, because not just the women, but the men who are also in that same, uh, that same category to utilize whatever resources you have to continue to make it. Yeah, most definitely. And, you know, and a word uh, that describes you is resilient. Mm -hmm. But I know that you also have words that you personally feel like describe you. So what is one word that you feel like describes you? I feel like I'm a very proud person. I'm proud of a lot of the achievements that I've overcome um, and a lot of those achievements took me a long time to become proud of because at the time when they were happening, I didn't consider them achievements. You know, when I was going through, you know, having a child in high school and right after high school, it didn't seem like an achievement at the time. It seemed, it was hard, mm -hmm. it was hard. But over the past few years, when I look back over my life, I realized, you know what? I did a damn good job. <laughs> like, like I can be really proud of the person that I've become, of the person that I've, the people that I've taught my children to be, mm -hmm. of all of my works that I create, even the works that from my earlier days where I go back and look at them now and I'm like, oh, that's kind of cringe. <laughs> um, but, you know, I'm so proud of all the growth that I've yeah. made. And every time I finish a piece, like I'm proud of that piece. And by the end of it, I read it back three times. And I'm like, oh, I'm proud of that piece. And so I just always try to be proud of everything that I'm doing. Yeah. And, you know, again, for those that's listening, no matter how long it takes you to achieve something, be proud of yourself, because I see so many people young or old who are graduating. And the thing about it is they know those long nights, those early mornings, trying to get those papers in, trying to do everything they can to continue their education and to finally get that degree. So no matter what year you get it, how long it takes you, you achieve that. and You got to be proud of yourself. So as far as um, with things that you want to achieve in life outside of the you know, your writing and stuff like that. Is there any other thing that you want to achieve outside of that? Uh, outside of uh, the writing, you know, I just want to leave a huge impact on, you know, not just, you know, my community, but just overall for Black women. I just want to leave an impact and uh, let other cultures know that, you know, Black women are nothing to be played with, <laughs> you know. Um, nothing but, to be played with. <laughs> like, I want to leave a legacy, not just for me and other Black you know, women, but, you know, my children as well, so that they have something to look up to. That makes sense. That makes sense. And I mean, that's that's a great thing because we see what's pushed on our community and it's a lot of things that uh, it just really dehumanizes us. And it shows that we're just all about, you know, living a fast life, you know, and, and, and things that really don't represent us in the yeah. greatest light. So I, I feel like what you want to do is bring balance in, and yes. that's what we need. We definitely yes, need balance. Absolutely, absolutely. You hit the nail right on the head because like I just mentioned to you a little while ago, like we have enough trauma pieces for black people. Yeah. Right? We see enough slavery movies. We yeah. see enough um, gangster movies, like the hood being shot up. Like we, we know that exists. We have all of that. And I, like you said, we just need balance to show the other side of black excellence. Yeah. Let's break those chains off for, for sure. For sure. For you know, sure. you know, and it's a great day out here today. Are there any, you know, just because some people who may not be from DMV, are there any, I guess, parks or are there any restaurants that you would, you know, uh, let people know about that they should check out if they ever come through the DMV? Oh, gosh, you caught me off guard with that question. Um, you know, there's a lot of good things in D.C. to see, uh, particularly there is that, oh gosh, now the, the name is going to escape me because I wasn't prepared, <laughs> but the, um, oh gosh, there's a garden in D.C., oh, I 
if you know it, please, please help me. In the comments when y'all watch this, you know, as she <laughs> describing it, put it in the comments. That, that'll help us out. Because they do, there's a whole garden of things in D.C. And there's like a butterfly garden in there, too. Um, it's like, you know, you can just go in and walk. You can spend a day in there and is just like walk a, and see nature. It's like a botanical um, garden or something like it that? It is kind of like a botanical garden. Okay. Have, the name is really escaping me. 